Hello students, I'm your lecturer Mr. Fun Man. So today we'll be going through this topic on environmental health and toxicology. Later on in this topic, you will find out what this molecule here stands for. A very famous molecule. Note that it's a chiral center. Maybe it's not. Now first things first, you see a very cute little baby here. Adorable. And the question for you is, is the baby ingesting toxic chemicals? Drinking milk, maybe from a breast milk from a mother, or from milk powder. But anyhow, the baby is drinking milk that we think that's good for his health. But wait a minute, we should look through. At the end of this topic, you should be able to explain the goals and environment health and identify the major environmental health hazards. Describe the various types of toxic chemicals in the environment and the factors which affect the toxicity and the defenses that organisms possess against them. What we can do to defend them. Next, you should be able to explain the movement of toxic substances and how they affect organisms and the ecosystem. You should be able to discuss the study of hazards and their effects, to evaluate the risk assessment and risk management, and finally, compare the philosophical approaches to risk and how they relate to regulatory policies. So here we have the first case study, the bisphenol A. Some questions asked by the experts. Are babies in the States born pre-polluted with BPA? Short for bisphenol A. What more evidence do we need to act? On the contrary, the ACC American Chemistry Council says there is no basis for human health concerns from exposure to BPA. So how is it that chemicals found to alter reproductive development in animals get used in baby bottles? How can it be that a substance linked to breast cancer, prostate cancer, and heart disease that's routinely used in food and drink containers? So this BPA right, has been associated with everything from neurological effects to miscarriages. But yet, it is in hundreds of products we use every day. And there is better than 9 in 10 chances that it is causing through your body right now. No kidding you. And to understand how chemicals may pose health risks that comes to be so widespread in a society, we could have spent some time to explore how the scientists and even the policymakers they study the toxic substances and other environmental health risks. And these are really challenging. So, the chemists first synthesized the BPA, which is an organic compound, with this chemical formula, C15H16O2, right here. That was in the year 1891. And as they begin to produce plastics in the 1950s, the chemists found that the BBA is to be a very useful thing in creating the epoxy resin used in the lacquers and the coatings. So it could possibly even be a new polish. Now these epoxy resins, right, that contains the EPA, they are being soon used to you know, coat the inner linings of a metal food and drink cans because they're hydrophobic. And they're also used as coatings for the inner pipings of our water supply, as well as the animals, you know, the varnish, adhesive, you know, the glue, super glue, AB glue, all these contain the BPA. And sometimes, even in the past, it was found in the dental sealants in our teeth. And the chemists also found that linking BPA molecules into the polymer, it will help to create the polycarbonate plastic, you know, the plastic that used to make your bottles, the Nalgene bottles, the Nike bottles, water bottles as transparent. So you make it, you know, it make it very hard for the PC polycarbonate. And we can also add this into our food containers, eating utensils, eye glasses, you know, the lenses there, CDs and DVDs, Blu-ray, laptops, any other parts, electronic parts, you know, the fridge, shelf, sports equipment, you know, you name it, we have it there. So with many users, the BPA has become one of the most produced chemical. But the thing is, the BPA leaches out, you know, from its products and it goes to the food, water, air, and body. And I can tell you that fully 93% of the Americans, they carry detectable concentration in the urine. So because the BPA passes through the body within hours, so these data suggest that we are receiving almost continuous exposure. And babies and children, the very young system, small system, they have a relatively exposure that's higher to BPA 
because they eat more for their body weight and metabolize the chemical less effectively. So, what is the BPA doing to us then? It's curious, right? It's quite interesting to find out what. Why is it harmful? Now, and to address these questions, the scientists run experiments in lab, like what we do, right? On the animals first, the guinea pig, the mice, and try to administer the doses onto a substance and measure the LC50 and LD50, so to measure the health impacts that results. And with the hundreds of studies with rats and mice, right, and other animals, they have been shown that there are many apparent effects of BPA, including a wide range of these uh, reproductive abnormalities, you know, meaning that they can't reproduce normally and have their offsprings. And the recent study suggests that humans also, they suffer from health impacts coming from BPA. Now, many of these effects by BPA occur at very, very low doses, much lower than the exposure level set so far by these regulatory agencies for human safety. So scientists say this is because the BPA mimics the female sex hormone, the estrogens, right here, there's a structure. They say that it's quite similar in the structure, although you see there's two benzene rings separated by sp3 carbon that's rotatable. And here there's only one benzene ring, but you see a conjoined four fused six membrane here. So similarly, it could you know go inside one of the one of the proteins using a key analog model. And the hormones, right, like estrogen, they function at minute concentrations. So when these kind of synthetic chemicals that are similar, you know, in terms of the structure, it reach the body at a similarly low concentration, this can trick the body into responding. So it's all about hormones. Hormones why we are not having babies in this current society. Not because of the people are not engaged in activity, but people want to have babies, they can't have one. Possibly because of such reason. So to react to this research, right, there's a number of uh, researchers, doctors, and even consumer advocates. They are calling on the government to regulate the BPA and for the manufacturers to stop using it because you know it shows some potential harm to human reproduction system. But the thing is, the chemical industry insists that you know, BPA is safe. They just say that oh, you know, they accuse the industry-sponsored research that finds no health impacts. So there's a bit of incentive there, you know, they sponsor some of these research, researchers need fun and grant, right? Sponsor them, of course, you know, there's a bit of a conflict of interest, but the industry might not want to care because they are profit-driven. So to sort out all this debate, there are several expert panels, they convene to assess the fast-growing bodies of this scientific research, see whether it's biased or not. And some panels really found that the typical BPA exposure to be nothing to worry about, really nothing to worry about. Most, you know, most of them even say that you know, the traditional research methods are not even geared, you know, more, more, not modern enough to test the hormone mimicking ability of of the BPA, like estrogen. So it's just like a just a hearsay, you know, like there's not enough evidence to say that oh, it's really acting like the the hormone. So that's why to deal with this BPA is forcing us, you know, to change our paradigm to the way we think about how we assess environmental health risk.